would Emmanuel Lutheran Church be like if every member were just like me? If everyone's attendance was like mine? Would we set up extra chairs? Or would the church be bare? If people had the same interest as I do in Bible study, would we have to schedule more? Or would we just close the doors? If everyone talked to God as much as I do, would God hear us pray? Or would God think we've gone away? If my giving was the model on which our giving was based, would we come up short? Or would we need more offering plates? If everyone's priorities were a reflection of my own, would children fill our Sunday school? Or would they stay at home? If everyone acted as I do, how many bruised, hurting, lonely people would be touched by our church? Would we be just a social club? Would we be closed or bankrupt or out of business? Or would it be a dynamic force for Jesus Christ in our community and our world? If, if everyone, everyone were just, just like me. My stewardship testimony, I titled, Accept the Invitation, Love Does. My stewardship journey began with a surprising phone call. Dave Kroll was Emmanuel's council president in June of 2015. And he asked if I was interested in filling the remainder of a six month term for a departed council member. Up to that point, my six years at Emmanuel had involved nothing beyond Sunday worship service. I was blissfully unaware of the behind the scenes workings of a church community. I pondered the request, unsure if I had anything to contribute. I said yes, figuring a six-month stint isn't too much to ask. Little did I know where that simple phone call would lead. I have such gratitude for the work of the Holy Spirit working through Dave in making that initial connection. And it would not be the last example of the Spirit's guidance. For some of us, recognizing our own skills and abilities is not very easy. But thankfully, those around us are usually better at seeing the potential attributes we have, offering an opportunity for us to uncover and make use of our God-given talents. When this happens, when someone else opens a door of opportunity, the only thing left for us to do is to say yes in a spirit of love. And with each affirmation, we alter our path in a way that moves us into a closer relationship with God and neighbor. Pastor Tammy has long emphasized the importance of personal relationships. In my experience, reveals the power of these connections. The year after joining council, Pastor Devon mentioned to me the idea of lay school. The commitment seemed pretty high, five semesters, that included every Thursday for 12 weeks, spread out over two and a half years. After much delay and deliberation and needing to change my work schedule, I finally said yes. This was not something I would have pursued on my own accord. And looking back now, the lay school community formed another bedrock of my spiritual and stewardship journey. It's hard to imagine not having that experience. And that involvement opened the door for my help in leading worship, which is certainly nothing I would have ever imagined for myself. One yes leads to another, leads to another. I have one more example. Emmanuel has a long and proud history of the bike ride for hunger. I've been thoroughly impressed with the commitment to this amazing example of stewardship in action. Deep down, I wanted to participate, but my only applicable skill was simply the ability to ride a bike. In my mind, I had nothing much to offer leading a group of young people on such an endeavor. Brittany asked about my interest on a couple occasions, 
And for a couple of years, I made excuses for why I couldn't participate. But I finally got over my fear and just said yes. And once again, I look back at that adventure with nothing but incredible gratitude that I was blessed to participate. Saying yes out of love will never lead us astray. My view of stewardship has certainly changed over the years. I now understand stewardship to be a nurturing of our God-given gifts to elevate the spiritual lives of our community. Using our gifts leads to spiritual growth and a stronger Christian foundation upon which we build outward and strengthen bonds with others as we walk together as disciples of Christ. I want to give thanks to all those that see the hidden gifts in others and present an opportunity to use them. And I close with a quote from one of my favorite books called Love Does by Bob Goff. I used to think you had to be special for God to use you, but now I know you simply need to say yes. With everlasting thanks and praise, amen. When Devon was in seminary, he had to write his call story uh, for his class on Survey of the Prophets. And I would like to read that call story to you. In the year of our Lord, 1996, in the second month, on the 19th day, the life of Devon Barracks began a transformation process that continues to this very day. There were no mystical creatures with multiple wings and heads and with many faces. There were no flashes of brilliant light or burning bushes. And there was no loud roar of thunder. There was only the very subdued light of a cardiac intensive care unit. The rhythmic sound of the ventilator breathing for him. And a steady beeping sound representing his heartbeat on the cardiac monitor. Just that very morning, he was expecting to have a routine cardiac catheterization and angioplasty, go home the next morning, and return to his busy world as CEO of a health maintenance organization. But the day unfolded differently. Suddenly, he was rushed to an operating room for emergency heart surgery. Now in the dim light, unable to speak, listening to a machine breathe for him, he found himself engaged in a disconcerting struggle, questioning the meaning and purpose of his life. He had talked with his pastor of a sense of being called to serve God in some way on occasions in the past, but he was never sure how. His life was consumed with career, and of course there was always tomorrow. Suddenly, in this sterile environment, it dawned on him that there may not always be a tomorrow. God seized his attention and a ventilator and monitors restrained him. It was a confrontation from which he could no longer run. It was not a vision, no doom on high from which a voice came forth. Rather, it was a feeling of presence around and within him, a peaceful calm gradually settled upon him as, begot, as God began to help him understand that he did indeed have a purpose for him and that it would be revealed if I put my trust in him and put my life in his hands. It was not something he wanted to run from, but rather toward, to discover. It was the beginning of a journey in surrendering his will for God's will. A few days later, off the ventilator and able to speak, he shared the experience with me and his pastor. My pastors, the pastor's words of encouragement and prayers depended, deepened my desire to embark on this journey of discernment that, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, eventually led him to Luther Seminary. The pathway has included early retirement, lay school, serving as a licensed lay minister, and then seminary. 
The journey has had its moments of questions and doubts, but God has continued to be his constant companion and provider, just as he assured him that he would in that dimly lit room on February 19th, 1996.